Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are back looking at the suggestions past the developers for May of 2020, and I was thinking about splitting the naval and also the helicopter stuff, but because there isn't too much for either, we're going to stick them in the same video, uh, since there is really only five articles. So let's start it uh, with the first part. This is from Constantia505, and this is a simple change to one of the pre-existing premiums that already exist in the game. So we have the PT-109, and uh, according to Constantia, there are a few people who would uh, who are upset uh, about the PT-109, uh, since it was worth uh, quite a lot of money back in the day, since, of course, it was a CBT uh, PT boat for the US, and what Constantia wants to do is to kick up its, its BR to make it a little bit more useful by adding something to it, uh, which was historically there, uh, but in on a different version of it. Uh, so if you have a look at this picture, one of the key differences between it and the PT-109 we have in game is it has a 37mm AT gun on the deck of it. Now, this uh, was added the day before it collision with the Japanese destroyer, the IJN Amagiri, in the Black Straits, uh, the crew removed the forward life raft and added two planks and lashed a US 37mm AT gun to the deck. So the rig mount was even used after the boat sank to help make a raft uh, for the two crew members who couldn't swim. So therefore, it would be a slight historic change for a different variant of the PT-109 giving it a little bit more firepower uh, with the 37 millimeter on the front the next ship we are having a look at is the robert class monitor uh, this is a uh, as i said a robert class monitor this is the hms abercrombie or the f109 and the hms abercrombie was the second monitor named after general sir ralph abercrombie and it was one of the two robert class monitors uh, that existed Existed. The displacement was nearly 8,000 tons, and it was lighter than some of the cruisers uh, built in World War II. If you don't know what the monitor class of ships are, it's pretty much a smaller uh, ship which is designed to house battleship guns. Uh, that's probably the best way to put it. We don't want to just keep building massive and massive and massive uh, machines to house these huge guns, so instead... Let's make smaller ships which can house some of these guns to keep up uh, firepower. So uh, she carried uh, two 15-inch uh, Mark I guns. This was also the main armaments that you find on battleships such as the HMS Queen Elizabeth, the Hood, and also the Vanguard. And nevertheless, her speed was less than satisfactory with only 23.2 kilometers an hour because obviously you have to give up some stuff if you're going to have such a large armament. The general service history of this machine was that it was commissioned on the 5th of May 1943 and then uh, was deployed to the Mediterranean and provided support for Operation Husky in July of 1943. During the Operation Avalanche, uh, she was supporting the Allied landings near Salerno uh, on the 9th of September and was damaged by a mine. Had, be, had to be repaired at Taranto, she headed to Malta in August 1944, where later she was again damaged by two mines, and after the second damage, it was not until July 1945 she could be dispatched to the Indian Ocean to support Operation Mail Fist, and intending uh, to liberate Singapore, but never implement uh, due to the Japanese surrender on the 15th of August. She arrived at uh, Sheerness on the 2nd of November and afterwards had been used for gunnery training and as an accommodation ship uh, through 1954 and then was subsequently scrapped scrapped at Barrow. Now, uh, something I didn't mention is this article is from Tim4499, so thank you for writing through it. And this thing isn't just the twin turret that you see, you know, in the center, which of course is a dual-mounted 15-inch set of Mark I naval guns. There's also four 
dual mounts of uh, the 4-inch uh, naval guns, the Mark 16s. It also has a 2-pounder 8-barrel Chicago piano on it. It has two quadruple 2-pounder mounts and it has eight dual 20mm Orlikan AA guns and four single 20 millimeters. So this thing does have a lot of secondary armaments on it uh, to basically, you know, keep it uh, going. <clears throat> when it comes to the uh, general rounds, that's the uh, that the uh, 15 inches could fire. It could fire HE, APC, and also good old AP. So it also had a shrapnel shell, uh, which was used in the First World War for these guns, which would be definitely interesting to see, at least in game. So yeah, I, I hope one day we do get to see the Monitor class ships. They are pretty cool and uh, also provide a hell of a lot of firepower. And uh, it would be nice as uh, kind of a way to uh, have larger guns in the game but not on huge ships. The next vehicle, or the next uh, idea we're having a look at is from Azens, and it's for a shrapnel shell. Uh, this is for the Japanese. If you've played the Japanese destroyers, one thing that you will find is a lot of them only have access to either AP or HG, where this would be a, uh, a shrapnel AA shell. So it would be used to be able to go after uh, stuff, uh, whether it be stuff such as uh, planes coming in or stuff such as uh, you know, little PT boats, or stuff such as grazing uh, the outer areas of other destroyers. So therefore, uh, this was used on the 127 millimeters, um, the uh, Type 89s, uh, but it's uncertain if the Type 3s uh, use this uh, shell, but I don't see why they wouldn't be able to. The Yugamo class would have an anti-air fire control system on it, so the Type 2, so the Yugamo uh, having Type fi the have not having the Type 3 uh, shell will be very odd so yeah it's just a simple one you know adding some kind of um, type 3 shrapnel AA shell for Japanese destroyers just so they can do better against uh, stuff such as planes or against you know lighter targets and just do more damage to them I think it would be nice to have on the main guns it would be a lot of fun the next one is from Miki Hoshi, and this is talking about some suggestions uh, for the AH-1G. The AH-1G that we have in game uh, already has some kind of interesting configurations for its turrets, but there are two that are missing, uh, which could definitely be added to the game. The first one is this XM-84 Emerson TAT-102A, and it is uh, pretty much just a single minigun uh, on the center of the machine. So uh, it's very very simple uh, basically you know how uh, you could uh, in game have like the dual mount uh, of the uh, miniguns well this is just the original turret design uh, which featured on the h1g it uh, housed a single 7.62 millimeter m134 minigun it had 8,000 rounds of ammunition and the gun had a selectable fire rate of 2,000 or and uh, 4,000 rounds per minute so the turret itself uh, could point the gun 180 degrees left or right it could elevate to 25 degrees and also could depress to 90 degrees so it would be nice uh, to see this uh, just because it is something that we don't have in game and was present historically on the AH-1Z. The next one is the M28. Now the M28 is just a combination of two different guns. What we have in game right now on the H1G is the ability to have um, either two M129s as a turret or two M134s, where what this is showing is a combo of one M134 and one M129. So having the minigun and then also having the 40 millimeter grenade launcher alongside, known as the M28, the Emerson TAT-141. So yeah, uh, it's just pretty as simple as that. Uh, the M28 turret uh, was also available on the H1Qs, the 1Ss, and also the 1Ps. So this is something which uh, obviously could be used on a bunch of different Cobras if it was required to. The next thing to have a look at is the Augusta Sea King, and this is from Nicholas Konku. Uh, and this is talking about, of course, this 
beautiful vehicle here which is a utility helicopter but at the end of the day you know it is uh, something which could carry extra ordnance we're talking about italy as well for the use of it even though this isn't an italian helicopter the italians did use it so it's a naval utility helicopter specialized as an asw the sea king originates uh, from the us uh, where sikorsky was willing to combine the hunter killer functions in one airframe and later they were awarded a contract by the us navy in 1957 and by night and by march 1959 the first prototype flew by september of that year the first helicopters were being developed uh, to fleet squadrons around america and of course this meant that america was willing to also market this vehicle for the countries who'd be also interested in putting this into service this included uh, rights to reproduce the vehicle in other countries uh, which led to italy's augustas uh, to keep um, the rights to produce the new helicopter on november of 1965 so although they had the rights to produce it, they opted to buy some up front uh, to allow future Italian crewmen to train and familiarize themselves with the new vehicle. Uh, it first uh, got put into service inside of the Italian Navy on December of 1968. And in terms of radar, the first 12 of these helicopters got equipped with a Doppler Teledyne radar, uh, while the later examples uh, would mount a Collins AN APM 195 radar. This was later replaced by later examples built by Augusta, uh, which uh, would have the MM APS 705 radar. And during the 70s, uh, uh, it uh, was also used extensively as a troop transport, uh, having troops of the uh, Comsebin and uh, riflemen of the Battalion San Marco uh, parachute themselves out of it. And they fitted multiple types of weapons, such as AS-12s, torpedoes, and anti-ship missiles. Although they were different variants, most retained the same armament, and it took part in Operation Leonte, uh, where it was used to carry troops and perform SAR missions. Italy eventually put it out of service in 2014 in favor of a more modern and stronger vehicle, the AW101. So yeah, this was um, obviously an American-born vehicle, but it was used extensively by the Italians, and if you want to know its general armaments, what it could have is four AS-12s, two on each side, also Sea Killer Mark II uh, Marts, then uh, it could have Otto Malara Mart Mark IIs, Mark 46 torpedoes, Mark 11 depth charges, the Doppler Teledyne radars, we talked about the Collins ANAPN radar, the MMAPS radar, night vision devices, and chaffs and flare. So this thing could be used in game. It wouldn't exactly have the best of armaments. Um, you can see here it's uh, it's uh, having the AS-12s uh, on it uh, in this, in this uh, picture right here. So yeah, I mean, it would be interesting to see. Um, a lot of these suggestions are additions to the game instead of, you know, well, so they, they are like additions of kind of mechanics or little ideas, uh, whereas the August the sea, sea King is like a full fleshed out thing. But that's it for naval and helicopters. As you can see, not a ton this, uh, not a ton this month. Hopefully next month we get a little bit more. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Battling Bacon, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Conte Baraka, Daniel Stanton, Elove Goat, Jay Wilt, Martinez, Trigger Hippie, Universe, Eugens Terry, and also AI'm Devilish and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.